Welcome to Frank Stajano Explains and to the Formal Languages part of the Discrete Mathematics course at the University of Cambridge. We have come a long way and now this finally takes us to what is probably the most memorable part of this course, which is where I introduce you to the wonders of the pumping lemma. I guarantee that in 20 years' time, once you're a successful computer professional at the top of your game and you've totally forgotten everything I taught you in this course, you will still remember that there was something in this course called the pumping lemma. With such a stupid name, you'll never be able to get it out of your mind. So while we are at it, you might as well learn what the pumping lemma is actually about. Hit the like button because this is clearly the one video you can't possibly forget. The core idea here is that a regular language is one that is recognized by a finite automaton, which is a machine with a finite number of states. Now, whatever the transitions between the states while the string is being recognized, if the automaton has n states, then it cannot do more than n transitions before revisiting a previous state. This intermediate loop from one internal state back to the same internal state has, by definition, brought back the machine to the same state where it was previously. So that that round trip makes no difference to what the machine will do next. That's because the automaton has no memory beyond what's encoded in its state. If we have a string that the machine accepts, and it's long enough to contain such a cycle, and we identify the substring that corresponds to the cycle, we may just remove that substring from the string, and the machine will accept the new shorter string just as it accepted the original. We may also repeat the cycle, uh, the substring of the cycle. We may repeat it a second time or a third time, or indeed as many times as we want, uh, making the machine go around the cycle again and again. And the end result will still be an accepted string. So this is in essence the pumping lemma. If a regular language accepts a long enough string that it cycles back to a previous state, then I can make infinitely many other strings that are also accepted by the language simply by pumping the cycle zero times, two times, three times, four times, five times, or however many times I like. Let's have a proper look at this and how to prove this formally. So we now enter another chapter which deals with the famous pumping lemma. And this is related to the last of our questions. Is there, uh, uh, is every language of the form LR, so ev is every language uh, recognizable by some regular expression? Uh, and the answer to that we already said is clearly no for a counting argument because their number of regular expressions is uh, infinite but countable and the number of languages is infinite but uncountable. So there aren't enough regular expressions to go around to uh, recognize all possible languages. But we hinted at the fact that even languages that are actually easy to describe, even with the tools that we have seen in the four previous lectures, in fact, even with the tools we have seen in the first of these five lectures, even such languages um, might not be regular. So, in the first lecture, we saw um, the definition of a language using uh, rule induction. So, with rule induction, you can easily define a language that is not regular. So, what this slide tells you is uh, the programming languages usually have a set of uh, reserved, uh, reserved words, well-formed tokens, such as, you know, um, if, then, and things like that. And the type of languages that we've been dealing with can typically recognize the tokens of a programming language. So the tokens of programming language Java might form an infinite uh, set of strings which uh, some regular expression could recognize. Some DFA uh, could, could match. However, the programming language itself, the set of all strings that are valid uh, programs in that programming language, 
is too complicated to be recognizable by a DFA or a regular expression, and so is not a regular language. But uh, the next slide gives us some examples of non-regular language that don't go to the complexity of uh, the Java programming language. And for example, uh, the set of strings over uh, the lowercase ASCII letters and open and close brackets in which the parentheses occur well nested. Well, this is something that with a little bit of thought um, we could define with uh, rule induction, couldn't we? Uh, that is a worthy exercise for you to do to see if you are uh, if you are following what is happening in this course. So uh, we could begin with axioms that say symbol A is a valid uh, a valid string in which the parentheses occur well nested. Symbol uh, no symbols is also valid case, okay, and this you can do for every symbol in the alphabet. This would be all your axioms, and then you could have a rule that says if some string w is in there, then w with brackets around it is also in there. Uh, and that allows you to generate things with lots of nested brackets like this. But you should also be allowed to do things where there's uh, things like this and like this and more nesting and more combinations and more of this. And so you might want to define something else here to cater for that, but it's not difficult at all. It's the stuff we've seen in the first lecture, which you could use. Um, what else have we got here? The set of strings over the uh, lowercase letters, which are palindromes, i.e., which read the same backwards as forwards. So A, B, C, B, A is a palindrome. Um, or the set of strings made of A, 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 B, 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 the, as many Bs as there were As, um, one following the other. All these things are not regular. And the intuitive reason why they are not regular is because regular languages must be recognized by a DFA. A DFA has a finite number of states. And the finite number of states limits how much it can remember. Because it can only remember things by being in a state as opposed to being in another state. There's no other way it can remember anything. And here, in order to form all possible strings that are made of a certain number of A's followed by the same number of Bs, I might have to remember an arbitrarily high number of A's before I start checking if I have as many Bs as that. So my DFA will have a finite number of states, for example, 100 states. So if I make a string with a lot more than 100 A's, then I will have no way for the DFA to remember how many A's it had seen. And therefore, it will have no way of checking whether I then see the same number of Bs afterwards. And this applies to all of these things. In the palindromes, you have to remember the first half of the string before you can check if the second half is unwinding it properly. And in here, you have to remember how many open brackets you got before you see if they're all closed. And so all these things will exceed. Um, the infinite sets that we are describing will always have some string that will exceed the capacity of any finite number of states DFA that might want to attempt to recognize them. And this is why these are not regular languages. But this is, it's, it's intuitive, it's somewhat convincing, but it's not quite a formal argument. And in order to make a formal argument that a language is not regular, then we can use this pumping lemma. The pumping lemma is something that has a complicated nesting of quantifiers. So we have to uh, peel 
things off in stages. But the idea here is that uh, for every regular language L, there exists a number small l, greater than or equal to 1, which is related to the memory capacity of the automaton that recognizes l. And this number satisfies the following property, that any string in the language that is at least as long as l can be pumped. And pumping a string means with a special recipe that we describe next, we make longer and longer strings according to a pattern, and all the pumped strings will belong to uh, the language we are talking about. So as soon as a string in the language is longer than L, longer or equal length to L, then the pumping lemma guarantees out of that string, I can generate infinitely many other strings. All strings in L, which are longer than or equal to L, can be expressed as a concatenation of three strings. W is a first part called U1, a middle part called V, and a second part, a third part called U2. Where uh, V is not empty, the combination of U and U1 and V is not exceeding L. And the way that I pump up the string is I repeat V zero or more times. So all these strings, uh, the pumping lemma says, will be in the language. So without V at all, will be in the language. Uh, with V in the middle, well, that was the original string. Uh, with V repeated twice, will be in the language. With V repeated three times, will be in the language. With V repeated a million times, will be in the language. So out of that single W, I can generate um, a countable infinity of strings in the language just by repeating the middle part arbitrarily many times. I have to find the right middle part, but there exists for every, for every string W, there will exist a way to split it such that I can repeat the middle part as many times as I like and everything will be in the language. And the reason for that is very cute. The reason for that is that L, the secret, is that L is actually the number of states in the finite automaton. So if I, um, if I take a string of length L, A1, A2, A3, A4, and An, then if I feed it to my finite automaton, what it will do is it will cause a sequence of n transitions from some state to some other state. Each symbol causes a transition, starting from the starting state. Now, how many of these states am I drawing? There are n transitions, so there are n plus 1 blobs in my drawing. But I said there exist only n states. So two of these blobs, I don't know which two, but two of these blobs will be the same, will be the same state. So any two of these blobs could be the same. It could be that this one is the same as this. It could be that this one is the same as this. It could be that this one is the same as this. This one is the same as this. I don't know, but two of these are going to be the same. Let's call them, uh, let's highlight them in, um, in blue. So let's say this one happens to be the same as this one, uh, as this one. If these two states are the same, then I'm going to call this part of the string u1 this part of the string v and this part of the string u2. And you can see that because this blue, these blue underlined blue states are the same state, then this is a loop 
in my DFA, and the DFA has no memory other than which state it is in. So once I get back to here, so this would be A5, A6, whatever. Once after this, I get A5, and I go into this state, which I'll, I'll call uh, Q5, for the sake of argument. If from this state, applying A5 sends me into Q5, then from this state, applying A5 would take me to Q5, because it's actually the same state. So it means I can drop V altogether, and if this was recognized, meaning that this um, final thing was an accepting state, then clearly the one having dropped this would be recognized, or the one with this inserted and looping back again and again and again, because this is the same state as this. However many times I do this, once I then restart getting an A5, I will follow this path anyway. And so, uh, it's completely irrelevant to the acceptability of the strings how many times I do V, including no times. And so this is the proof of uh, this interesting property that every, every DFA has a number, which is its number of states, such that all the strings that exceed the number of states are pumpable because they are, at some point, doing a loop among the states. If the string is longer than, than the number of states, at some point it must loop, and the loop can be repeated arbitrarily many more times or removed altogether. And that's the effect of pumping that gives me all these extra strings. So uh, this is good fun, but what's the use of that? The use of that is that we can use it in reverse by saying, if a language is regular, the pumping lemma tells me that all strings longer than L are pumpable. So if I want to prove that the language is not regular, I must uh, do a very convoluted argument, which says, if the language is not regular, mm, then it must violate the pumping lemma somewhere. So it means uh, uh, that uh, for strings that are longer than L, this probably doesn't work. But how much is L? We don't know. Nobody told us. So you have to do quite a bit of uh, reversing quantifiers in order to apply this.